On 17th August, we honor Saint Jean Delano, also known as Saint Joan of the Cross, who was the founder of the Congregation of Saint Anne of Providence. Jean Delano was born in Saumur in France on June 18, 1666. She was the youngest in a family of twelve. Her parents owned a business near the sanctuary of Notre Dame de Adelier. Although but six years of age when her father died, she helped her mother run the store in order to maintain the family. Although skillful and hardworking, she was also bossy, selfish and looking for notice. Her mother died when she was 25 and Jean took over the business herself. As well as a drapery and a shop selling religious goods, Jean also provided accommodation for pilgrims visiting the shrine. So absorbed was she in making money that her shop was open even on Sundays, an unusual practice in that period. The future was hers. Her business was growing and prospering. It was precisely within this context of success that at the age of 27, shortly after the death of her mother, an elderly woman, a faithful pilgrim to the shrine of Notre Dame de Adelier, invited Jean to consecrate herself to the many poor people of her neighborhood. On Pentecost in 1693, Jean met a poor widow and pilgrim who foretold that she would one day spend her life in caring for the poor. Although Jean was already a devout enough person, she treated this prediction with skepticism. But as time passed, she began to focus more on care of the less fortunate. Despite the responsibilities she had accrued in response to this call which she believed to have come from God, Jean turned toward the poor. They assumed more of her time each day than did her clients, until finally they became her full-time occupation. Many doubted her sincerity, knowing her previous desire to make money, but she was not disheartened. Within a short time, no longer did the poor await her visits to them, but they came to her. In 1700, she warmly welcomed the child into her home, and soon after, she took in the sick, the aged and the destitute. She especially cared for the distressed and the abandoned, single mothers and prostitutes. With so many needing lodging, the only place for the poor were the grottoes hollowed out in the tuff. She made them as comfortable as she could. However, it was necessary for her to seek help. Within four years, in 1704, some young girls were interested in helping Jean and were even willing to wear a religious habit if she wished them to do so. It was thus that the congregation of St. Anne Providence was born. Under this name, the constitutions were approved in 1709. Jean's tenacity, supported by the dedicated women who worked with her, brought about the foundation of Saumur's first home for the poor a home which King Louis XIV called for in 1672. Very quickly, her charity spread beyond the limits of Saumur and of her diocese. More than that, already there were 40 helpers who were under her direction and who had made the decision to follow her example of self-sacrifice, of prayer and of mortification. At her death on August 17, 1736, Jean left a dozen committees as well as homes for the poor and schools. Everyone could admire her zeal and the work she accomplished in the numerous visits she received and made, but only her closest friends knew about her mortification, her life of prayer and of union with God. It is from this that her untiring charity proceeded. She was attracted toward all those who suffer, but especially those who are poor, and God knew there were so many during those sad years of want, of cold, of famine, and of war. The sisters of Jean Delano, as they simply call themselves today, number about 400 sisters in France, in Madagascar, and in Sumatra, where they began in 1979. On October 31, 1982, 
Saint Joan of the Cross was canonized by Pope John Paul II. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. O God, who have taught your church to keep all the heavenly commandments by love of you as God and love of neighbor, grant that practicing the works of charity after the example of blessed Jean, we may be worthy to be numbered among the blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.